Hey folks, Landstrider here, and welcome to episode 2 in my regrowth series. This pack's available on the Feed the Beast launcher. Uh, and what I did between this episode last is I cleared out this big area. I took it way down, all the way down to uh, sea level. And I, I, I just used crack sand for the walls for now, uh, but eventually I'm going to replace that with some much nicer looking material. But um, just for the sake of getting things moving, I went ahead and used just used the the material that I was that I was digging out to go ahead and build the walls. Now these walls are four high. That area there is going to be my actual house residence area. Um, and then this big area out here, this courtyard, is going to be where I do all my gardening and and other stuff. Uh, I was very conscious of the chunk lines when I was building this. Let me go ahead and show you chunk lines. So I kept... Uh, well, I wanted to follow this wall because this, this chunk right here is all... Or this building is all within a chunk. So it's like 14 by 14 interior space. Uh, and this first level is just going to be like the lower level. This will eventually be like a, the basement storage area. And then I'm going to build up, I think, what I'd like to do is since I'm on the ocean and on a little bit of a peninsula right here, what I think I'd like to do is turn this into a great big giant lighthouse and live in it eventually. Something like that. And and then I'll turn these walls, make these walls look not a lot nicer out here, this barrier. Uh, something that will be considerably nicer looking. Let me turn those lines back off. There we go. So moved all my stuff into here. And you can see that I have like a full chest full of that crack sand after digging all that out. That took me a while. Very tedious with this little flint pickaxe. Uh, yeah. And then outside of this wall, uh, I cleared space too. Uh, three wide space just to make sure that no mobs... Well, aside from spiders. Spiders could still get in, they could climb a wall and come across, but uh, no other mobs should be able to get past this wall, I hope. I know that some of the newer mobs, I think like the nether cats and the wolves, have the ability to jump. And they were able to get over my two high walls in, in some of my previous uh, playthroughs, single player or multiplayer. Um, but they didn't seem like they could get over the three high walls, so hopefully that'll be sufficient. All right, now out here you can see I got a lot of torches lighting it up. Oh, there's one of them explosions, and I figured that out uh, thanks to watching Funshine X's videos and a, and a user comment. What that those random explosion ex, uh, explosions are is the the Ender Minis will attack creepers, and uh, they'll fight, and a creeper will end up trying to blow up the Ender Mini or whatever, and that's why you keep hearing those random explosions. Uh, you don't have to worry about it though, because in this version of the pack, uh, I'm not even sure, maybe all versions of the pack, now this version of the pack, the uh, damage, the creeper damage is turned off. So don't have to worry about them destroying stuff. And that's also good because now I don't have to worry about them blowing up my garden if they do have managed to somehow get in here. I imagine he turned that off because otherwise, with the creeper minis fighting the the or the creeper minis, the ender minis fighting the creepers all the time and they would be constantly making the caverns under your wherever you are at the caverns bigger and wider and blowing bro uh, blocks up and causing lots of floating tile entities and stuff so um imagine that's why he turned off creeper damage uh in this version so anyway let's let's get on with explaining what's going on out here uh, you see I've got some blocks placed down. These are just kind of markers to kind of help me visualize it as I was uh, laying it out. And I've got all of these torches down. These torches are going to be lighting up my gardening area and giving uh, so that my plants should be able to grow all the time and any, you know, through the night and stuff even. Because uh, they do require light. They do require a certain light level to grow. And right here you can see I've got one garden dug out. I need to fill this in with dirt. And so go grab some dirt. And there's going to be something else I need to do is I need to make some crops. Crops are relatively easy to make. Uh, they just take sticks and you take, uh, whoops, not, not the fence pattern. There we go. A 4x4 four four pattern. And you get crops, all kinds of crops. Let me get even more crops because I'm going to need lots and lots of crops. Um, 
And then, you know what else I'm going to need? Is I'm going to need a bucket or I'm going to get water in there for, ta for the time being. So I'm going to make a clay bucket, and I believe I even have a quest for this, so I, sh I need to make it anyway. Uh, surely I've got some charcoal somewhere? No? Must have used it all up on torches. That's okay. I've got plenty of wood to use. Actually, I use these stairs that I don't really need. I don't know if I'm going to be using that wood in here at all. I think I'm just going to go right for some kind of stone eventually. Like I said, this four, this four tall base is going to be is going to stay, but the walls will change, and um, and then from there I'm going to build up a, a lighthouse tower thing. There we go. I mean, clay fire bucket, and then I probably bet that completed a quest if we look in here under what the world came to be. It sure did. There we go. We need to make a bucket, clay bucket, and then cook it, and that's going to give us some dirt and some bone meal. All right, bone meal's good for this early game going to be really helpful. So I want to take these corners out. Those are just marking so that I can kind of, like I said, visualize what I was doing here. I'm actually going to leave a gap there because I'm going to put sand in that row. And there are, there are a couple different ways that you can go about farming these seeds or, or getting them to increase. Basically what it is 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 AgriCraft uh, adds a type of farming that is based off of the old IC2 farming with the crops and stuff. Uh, you can get them to crossbreed and mutate and they have stats. Oh there's my crops. I need those. Uh, so they have stats. Uh, I can't see them just yet because I need to make an analyzer before I can actually check the stats on my crops. I believe that's a uh, the quest anyway. Okay, I'm back after a quick uh, reload. Uh, had a little crash there. There seems to be some kind of a random bug in NEI, which will occasionally just crash you for looking at recipes. So hopefully if I click this again, it'll show me the recipe. See that time? Showed me the recipe. No problem. No crash. Uh, so there we go. I got to get this together. Um... But I don't think I have five. Well, actually, I should have the stuff for that. All I need to do is make some glass. Didn't I make some glass? I swore that I made glass. I did. There it is. Uh, the only problem is, is it requires a pane of glass. So I'm going to have to to use up six of those to get 16 panes. I only need one. I wish there was a, a cheaper recipe for that. Or a... a, a less wasteful recipe when you don't need all that many. So I'm also going to need a cobblestone slab, a regular wood slab of some kind, some some kind of wood planks, and some sticks. I'll probably need, I think I need more than those. So if I go ahead and make a few more sticks, I'll definitely use up any extra sticks that I make for sure. So the wood slab goes there. You need the stone, some kind of a stone slab in the middle there. It can be, I think it can be just about any kind of a stone slab. And then I think it was, it sticks the rest of the way. There we go. That's going to give me a, my a seed analyzer. Yay. All right. Well, where do we want the seed analyzer at? I'm going to put it on top of that crafting table. The only reason I have the second crafting station right here beside the tool station is that gives me the tinker's table, and I use that sometimes. The problem is I don't like to use it for everything because it puts this big window over here and, and kind of blocks out a lot of your NEI. So that's why I have this one over here beside this chest for easy crafting. So I can do do use that for that. And this one as the Tinker's Tail, basically for improving weapons and stuff when I want to add a whole bunch of stuff to it all at once uh, and things. Okay, and I need sand. I want to put sand in that one last slot uh, because I'm working for a cross. I'm looking to get a cross breed right off of the bat. The cross breed I want to get is sugar cane. Which, um, let's get back in here real quick. Uh, yeah. 
which uh, I made that, and, I, and I, if I needed it for a quest, but I can't get to that quest yet because first I have to have some wheat, some sugar cane, and some mandrake. Okay, in order to get that stuff, uh, I really needed some doors, some easy ways to get through my wall that uh, won't let the mobs in. Now, what I found that works really good for this is to use the carpenter's doors because carpenter's doors even if you do leave them open by accident or even on purpose uh, it seems like mobs can't actually come through them even when they're open so uh, that's I like that about them maybe a little cheaty um, but it, it definitely works in my benefit hear a mob out there I just need a bucket of water Okay, so a bucket of water, I'm going to go right in the middle of this. Now, something you might be noticing about my garden plots. They're not maximum size for a water hole. They're one short. They're seven by seven. Uh, and the reason that they're not nine by nine is because later on, when I go to um, using a sprinkler system, Sprinklers only cover a 7x7 seven seven area, so I'm just planning ahead, and I'm only going to use a 7x7 seven seven plots. So I need to put... Oh, i got to till it first. And I think I mentioned this before, but the only thing you can till dirt with in this pack is the mattock, which is why it is important to make. There we go, all tilled up. And now I should be able to put crop sticks on these now. Yes, there we go. And there are many different kinds of soil that you can put these crops on. You can put it on tilled regular dirt, you can put it on sand, or you can put it on the red sand or the regular sand. Um, you can put it on garden soil, and we're going to get into how you get that and making that relatively quick because. Uh, we're going to have extra seeds. Where did my seeds? Oh, I should have got all my seeds with me. So if I cross a wheat seed with a carrot seed, I'm going to put a carrot seed here, and then I take and make that, that stick, that, that crop in between them, a cross crop by adding another crop. Uh, very similar, like I said, very similar. If you're familiar with IC2 crops, this will be fairly uh, familiar to you. And now these because these are both adjacent to this they can parent they can both be parents of whatever decides to grow here it's the best way i can describe it now um i was under the impression that this wouldn't work in in uh in the current pack but uh it does actually work you can just string out your crop so i can just grow this crop and what will happen is it will eventually spread to this cross crop. This one will. Um, and, be, and it has a small chance of mutating and gaining stats as it spreads. So each time it spreads down this direction, it has a small chance of gaining crops. This is a good way to do it Like if you, if you don't want to pay attention to it. Like if you have other things that you want to get done and you just you know want to set it up and walk away from it and then go do other things, this, this works fine. Um, and, then, and, and you don't have to grind it, you don't have to pay much attention to it. It is fairly slow to get you the res end result. So these crops, if we come in here and I go to my crop analyzer and throw these seeds in here that I have, we can see that they have a growth of one, a gain of one, and a strength of one. Um, I'm not sure what the strength signifies. I suppose that it's resistance to, to disease or, or weeds or whatever. Um, but as far as I can tell, it doesn't seem to do a whole lot. The growth is just how quickly it becomes an adult. The gain is how much of the crop you get from it when you harvest it. So the maximum in this pack for all of those stats is 10, 10, 10. Uh, so we want to get that, that crop. We want to get all of our crops to 10, 10, 10. Um, and this is one way to do it. You can just like make a string, 
let them grow along. And uh, th thank you, Funshine, for for uh, for pointing out that it does actually work in the official pack. The reason I thought it didn't work is because I updated Agrocraft in the old pack, and it stopped working. So there was some kind of configuration thing going on there, and it made it not work. Anyway, it's irrelevant now. It does still work, um, but it takes a lot of time and patience to wait for it to go all the way down to the to the end of the crop line. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to cross, what is it to cross? I need belladonna. Did I have some belladonna seeds somewhere? If I cross a potato with a belladonna, yeah, I do. I have some belladonna. So if I take and cross, put the belladonna there and the potato right here. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with these. I'm just going to give them crop lines. Uh, and then whoop, I'm going to run, run out of crops is what I'm going to do. Uh, well, let me give me two of those back so I can get this started. Okay, they won't really do anything until these guys are adults. So let's use some of this bone meal that we got and speed this process up. There we go. Now that they're adults, they should... Um, in a relatively short period of time, they should attempt to to spread to nearby double crops. And then when they do that, because these, like, let's just look that one on. Oh, it's already got something there. So it became a belladonna seed. That's not what I wanted. Uh, it's not 100% chance. So sometimes you will get the, uh, the cross crop that you're looking for, and sometimes it will just be, it'll just be one of the, One of the, um, what am I trying to say? One of the parents. So uh, it may have gained some stats. We'll check it here in a second. I'll look at that seed that I just, oh, look, something already, no. We'll go look at that stats on that seed and see what happened. See if it gained any stats or anything. I might want to uh, to use it. There we go. See, it gained growth of two and, and uh, strength of two. So that was a better seed now. So I can take that and no idea what that one is, but uh, let's get these guys moving along again. Okay, so that's the lazy man's method right there. Whoop. Gosh, got a long reach on there. Um, we now I'm going to show you how I prefer to do it. I prefer to do this. Actually, let's go ahead and put a cross crop there because I think that this makes something, and I want to get that uh, other crop. Uh, now I'm going to show you my preferred method of crossbreeding, which is a lot more labor intensive, but you do end up with a 10, 10, 10 a lot sooner. I'm going to go ahead and set up this next little area right here and just give me a moment I'll be right back and we'll I'll show you my new other method okay I'm back I've got my next little plot set up I'm ready to go I'm gonna show you what I would do for like these belladonna seeds I went ahead and analyzed the other one that the grew it was actually two 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 so that was even better um, so what I do is I put, take, and plant four crops like so. Oh, why did it not? There we go. Inventory tweaks is not working the way I was hoping it would. Uh, so there we go. I put these like this. This is what I call the four parent method. And then um, once these are grown, let's see if we can get them all grown up, mature, which not mature. And I need a little bit more bone. Let me see if I have some bone meal or bones in here extra. Yes, I do have a couple. So you want to wait until all four of your parents are fully mature before you actually go ahead and place the... That one's not mature yet. There we go. Now it is. Before we place the double crop here. The cross crop. So now whenever this uh, decides to grow something on it, it's going to look in the four, it's going to look at all four sides 
and take the stats of all four of those parents and kind of I'm not sure what the algebraic expression is but it kind of adds them up divides them down and you end up with a much uh, better better seed than you would if it only had one parent like over here this only has one parent so it has a chance of increasing some but it's not nearly the chance that this has this has like four times the chance of increasing every single stat uh, so yeah that's how we do that now next thing I need to do um, I'm actually gonna remove this sand now because I'm gonna show you what you do so this is what you do when you have four crops to start with like if you can like there's a couple things you're gonna start with four seeds or whatever however many seeds you start with that's great now what happens if I only have one of a particular kind of seed to work with well what I do for that is this, it's the same method right when I'm gonna start with placing down my four crops this is oh wait well, before I even do that I need to change this to sand because I'm doing sugarcane sugarcane requires sand to grow in now inventory tweaks decides to work right okay there we go start with my four outer crops but I'm going to just put the one there I really don't have to wait for it to be a parent to be adult to go ahead and put a double crop there I can just come back later and there should be eventually this is going to grow to adult and make a uh, and spread over to this I'm going to speed it up a little bit there we go so what's going to happen and once this spreads to this I'll have a second seed I can move that seed to this cross crop and wait for it to become an adult because from this point on I want to make sure that all of my parents are adults before I put a cross crop once I have two seeds that is if I only have one seed it don't matter I can just wait because it isn't going to spread until but then once this becomes a seed I move it over here wait for it to be an adult and then I'll put another cross crop down the third seed will get to have two parents so it should have considerably better stats I'll move that third plant over here and wait for it to be an adult and do another cross crop that will give me a fourth seed that's had three parents and should have even better stats yet and it'll move over to here at that point I just go back to following this method which is to now that I have the four parents I just go ahead and get the offspring uh, and there's my first belladonna that had four parents now let's go take a look at what the stats are on this belladonna it should be considerably better than any of the parents there we go look we got five growth three gain and four strength off of that so as you can see in a matter of maybe five or six generations so I started with a 101 a 122 or a 212 a 222 and a 101 and you can see that the stats are all much greater than their than, than the parents so the sum total is much greater than the individuals uh, so this is this this will work it just takes a lot more time uh, for it to to do the process and like I said it, it, you gotta wait for the each one of these you have to wait for it to become an adult before it'll spread to the next one and then it's only gonna gain a very small amount of stats at best sometimes it won't gain any for a few for a few movements like a few generations um, so this methods pro and then these are, these rows are only seven long there's no way I'm gonna have a 10 10 10 down here even after I do this twice I probably still won't have a 10 10 10 at the end of the of 14 generations this way I get a 10 10 10 in about um, I would say anywhere between five to seven generations I'll have a, five, a 10 10 10 and basically what I do for each generation is I will get four seeds once I have four seeds that came off of these parents I will then go ahead and get rid of these parents and put the new for the new generation of seeds down to start making the next generation seeds okay over here we got a sugar cane and now I can move that sugar cane across there see if I can get it to adult hey I did and then now I'm ready to get the third seed of sugar cane and if I Wow, that was fast. That was excellently fast. Now, if I look at this one, now remember this one only had two parents, and one of them was a one one one, and one of them was whatever. So there we go. It, it had it had a little bit of gain to the stats.
I'm going to go ahead and plant that down there. Before I put another cross crop down there, I'm going to wait till that becomes an adult. So, And then finally, the next thing I really am going to need, hopefully I have enough wood left. Might ha I might have prematurely used... Oh, look, there's a dog on my wall. That's not good. That's not good. I might have to put some lights up there to prevent things from spawning on the, the peaks of the walls. Hopefully he will, won't uh, come at me while I'm while I'm over here. Oh gosh, I need more more materials. I need more sticks. Oh, I have sticks. Good, I have sticks. And then I need oh, planks. I need planks. I don't have any planks. He's growling at me. I don't like it. Okay, well I'm gonna have to wait till the sun comes up and then go gather some wood in order to make the next thing. But let me see if there's any quests that I can complete. How did it not give me? Oh. I actually need sugarcane in order to complete this. So for that, I'm just going to pick an adult by right-clicking it. That's going to give me a piece of sugarcane, and now I should have... There we go. Completed that quest. He, he, I think that guy wants to get me. I think he does. So, Well, he decided to jump off the outside of the wall. That's good. Now I don't have to worry about him. Um, okay, I think what I want to do is, while I'm waiting for the sun to come up, I'm going to go ahead and start filling in the rest of these dirt patches, and then I will be back after that to, uh, to show you one last thing about uh, something you want to get early game gardening going. So, back in a few. Okay, I am back. I just went uh, right out there and took down the closest deadwood tree, large deadwood tree that was to me. And that gave me plenty of sticks and wood to work with, so I should be able to craft up this other thing that I really think that I want to have as soon as possible. So let's go ahead and get that. And um, no, oh yeah. Um, so there we go. That's what I'm looking for right there—a composting bin. I'm actually gonna get two of them because I'm gonna put one on this side of the garden down here somewhere. Uh, Let's just put it against this wall right over here. And then I want to put one on this end of the garden, too. So that... There we go. That'll work. So that if I haven't be done this end of the garden working, I don't have to walk all the way over there to get to that compost bin. I can just throw stuff in there. Now, why do I want these composting bins? They're going to be very important later on. Uh, these are all adults, yes. I'm ready. Okay, so I'm ready to do a cross crop here to get my fourth seed of sugarcane. Let me look over here. Oh, look at that. I've got a mandrake root. And that's... And it was mature. And then, since it's daytime, I get this little guy pops out at me, and I gotta kill him. Ready? Come on, hold. There we go. And then he should drop, there it is, a piece of mandrake. He actually will drop a second seed. Now that's a default seed, so it's going to be a 1-1-1. One, one. Um, this seed's probably going to be a 1-1-1 one, one, one as well because it was offspring by two 1-1-1s. One, one, and uh, when you're crossbreeding and, and mutating into a new crop, the best you can have is like half of the total of the uh, of the highest parent or something like that. Anyway, if you, if you put two 1-1-1s one, one, ones together, you're going to get a 1-1-1. One, one, one. If you put two 10-10-10s together, your crossbred crop at best can be 5-5-5. Five, five, five. So, there's that. So, I think this these should both be 1-1-1s. One, one, yeah. But now that I've identified them, they'll stack. That's a good thing. And I've gotten my mandrake root for the completion of this quest. It's going to give me a little more bone meal. Excellent. That's going to help me along. Uh, I'll be able to get... Uh, move my crops forward much faster faster now. Okay, so now that this is down, let's see, one, two, three, four. This would be the fifth generation right here. Let's take a look at the seed and see how much we've gained on it. What have we got now? It is now a three, one, three. Not a ton of gain for four generations. Now, the like I said, the benefit of of doing it this way is that. I'm not having to really mess with it. Now with these, like, I have to come over there and get those from time to time. And, you know, put a new cross crop down to get the next generation going. Or until I get four offspring from it. And then uh, that'll be the next generation. So, 
something I wanted to correct real quick. I said, I think I said in the last video, I was talking about the wolves, and I think I said that they were added by Enderzoo. That was totally incorrect. Those wolves, those white wolves that you see and you hear occasionally, those are actually added by witchery. So, um, and you can correct me if I'm still wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that's correct now. So, uh, these bins right here, these composting bins, that is going to allow me to eventually, well, first I'm going to get some compost. Uh, this stuff right here from Garden Core is compost. And then once I can get some of that compost, I can use that. I can make a couple tools with it. Uh, but this right here is what I'm after, this garden soil. This garden soil is going to be important for later on when I start getting into more advanced crops. Uh, are not going to grow on just your basic soil. You're going to need some garden soil for that. So the sooner you start composting your old seeds, your, your not so good seeds, like uh, I got this potato seed, it's probably not that great. Check this out. That's a 111 belladonna. I must have got that from outside someplace. So that 111 belladonna, I don't need that. I've got better over there. I'm going to gonna get much better for my generation so that can go away so when I put it in the composting bin it 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 turn it uses up seeds and crops and whatever to go ahead and make compost if you hover over the composting slots it'll show you everything in your inventory that it will accept and turn into compost so it'll take sticks and string and um, a lot of different things that it would take but mostly I'm just gonna be feeding it all of my seeds that I don't want so this potato seed I don't necessarily want actually I do want that that's got a that's got a better better than the basic potato seed. Actually, no, I'm gonna throw it away. I'm gonna throw it away because I'm doing the row the row thing with the potatoes right here. So uh, you can see that between my carrot and my potato, I managed to get a pumpkin. That's great. So I'm gonna take the pumpkin over here and start setting it up for my my method, my preferred method of of um, of growth, of uh, of expansion, and this, like I said, this is a lot more labor intensive. But it's not like you can spend your time mining or or something else. I mean, the purpose of the pack is to grow stuff. So um, you know, I don't have a problem with this method. I prefer this. Uh, if I had a bunch of things to do or I wanted to go exploring or something, or like if I was going to you know, on a long expedition to the nether and I had a way to load my chunks back here, and there is actually ways. Uh, Railcraft adds some world anchors, but they are require materials that you don't have access to real early game. Uh, but by the time you're able to go to the nether, you should be able to also make a world anchor. Uh, but, you know, for something like that, then I might go ahead and set up a bunch of, 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 uh, of these you know, so that they can be doing something. The Blank Garden could be doing something while I was away. Um, I think that is about all I want to talk about that for now. So there's two methods. There's there's a third method that's not too bad. It's the checkerboard method, which basically is just this expanded to the whole garden. Um, and it, it, it works, sort of. Uh, but I'm not going to be so good. So, all right, so... Since I finally got that one done, I got my saying. I can also complete this one, the feeling CD, which was to make the seed analyzer. And that's going to give me an agricultural journal, which goes inside the interface right there. And then as you scan seeds, it will add those to the journal. And you can actually look those up by taking the journal out, taking a look inside there. It gives you a nice introduction. You can see I've only scanned Belladonna, so that's the only one that's going to show me. Or that's, I've only scanned Belladonna while the book was in there. So every time you scan a new crop with this book in there, it will add a journal entry to it, and then you'll be able to get some information about that seed. Okay, I think I'm probably past my regular time limit. Um, that's um, that's the main thing about crops. I mean, that's that's I'm going to be doing lots of this. I'm probably not going to show you every time you know I do this in, in the future. There's one, uh, I guess there's one other thing to mention. Um, over here, this little area right here, I'm not going to turn it into crops right away. 
I'm actually going to take and just leave this dirt. I'm just going to leave that dirt for a second. And I'm going to take and get that seed, if I can find it. There it is. The pasture seed that I got. This is going to be important. I'm going to use this pasture seed right there. And that's going to rapidly cover that area with grass. Got almost all of it. And now I can take and use that to start getting some flowers for Batania with using that floral fertilizer that I got from breaking the grass out there. So now I can take that. 7x7 seven is seven, actually like the perfect space because it's big enough that it will you won't lose any. Okay, what happened, the reason I only got three flowers is because one of the flowers would have spawned in the dirt area. That's why I only got three. So once this is full grass, oh, and my inventory is completely jam-packed. Once that is full grass, I can go ahead and start making more flowers. And uh, we can move on and get on into some Batania stuff. Let me go ahead and put all of this stuff away that I can. Oh, wow, I got so much stuff. So much stuff. So I need that flint. Um, these tools run out of durability relatively quick, but flint is so abundant, it really doesn't matter about, you know, just, you know, repairing them up before they're even done or anything. But uh, uh, I like to carry a little bit of flint on me because these they break relatively quick. So you'd be in the middle of doing something and... Fireworks. Sky the beginning. All right, we're going to end on that note. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. Be sure to leave a like, comment, thumbs up if you want to see more. Um, and until next time, I will catch you later.